consideration for our morbid annihilation, nor importance to the 1.5 million innocent souls that were starved from damnation, all the dehydration, the decapitation, and the revolution. How can, How can one you forgive, forgive what has not been accepted? The cruel intentions of the genocide that stays rejected. Harkarjan mix of emotions. How can this be? Yes, the pain of Armenians is a deep wound, a wound that has not, has been left open, especially by the denial. I once attended a lecture by Dr. Shake Kaftarian, a psychologist who specializes in trauma, and she said that trauma is passed down from generation to generation, that we as Armenians all have transgenerational trauma from the stories we grew up with. 
But she said the way to heal and deal with this trauma is to come together by creating support groups, by dancing, by singing, by reciting our poems and continuing to keep our stories. She said simply by being together and having allies, we can, we can heal emotionally, but slowly. Today here we have with us not only Armenian organizations, but also we have Latino, Pacific Islander, African American, Indian, and Fijian students. These students are not Armenian, but they understand our pain and they see the injustices of this period. And they are here to let us know we are not alone and they will be fighting for our site. Thank you. We also have with us a new generation of young Armenians, a generation that continues to remember the genocide and works actively to preserve it. They train a new generation of American citizens they run service camps, they lobby in D.C. to demand justice, they raise money for Gharapal and Syria, and they always rebuild, renew, and strengthen. Thank you. I would now like to invite those organizations to come forward and present their...
all Armenians. Thank you very much. Thank you. Will be performing Cruel Intentions by Cielo Contreras Gomez. Wow. How can one forgive what has not been accepted? The many lost lives that have been rejected. Minds, yours, our mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, and friends taken from us, taken by the cruel intention of those who leave us in disgust. Why were we killed and raped? or faced with the feeling of no escape. Our children and babies were shot at too, improving the skills of those whom the cruel intentions belong to. So tell us how to forgive their cruel intention. Our hearts and minds destroyed without question. Are they unaware of the atrocity they bestowed upon Armenia? The perpetrators denying our downfall to the entire media. They show no consideration for our morbid annihilation. No importance to the 1.5 million innocent souls that were starved in damnation. All the dehydration, the decapitation, and the mutilation. How can we forgive what has not been accepted? The cruel intentions of a genocide that stays rejected. Blisters on my feet follow me from Deazor, just as much as the trauma does. This silence is a firm hand that wraps around my dry throat, almost as much as the thirst. These are the broken souls of the Armenian women whose souls seem, whose innocence seems to have slipped from their grasp. I've never known such shame. I looked into the eyes of an Ottoman soldier and did not find disgust, but the absence of humanity. Hatred has poisoned the spirits of these men. My desire to walk this earth is becoming an unfamiliar idea. This loneliness suffocates me more than the stench of decomposing flesh. Wow. This cloud has rained injustice in the form of blood. Sorrows fill the heavy hearts of my people, like the women's corpses fill the Tigris River. All I could do was find refuge in my memories. These memories carried me through the mountains of Musalir and the desert of Derzor. Dear God, dear Asfaz, I am the power of my people, the reflection of generations. Dear God, dear Asfaz, bless me with the privilege of survival. These are the moments when strength seems to light up in my chest like a fire. These are the moments when my name sits on my tongue, and I know who I am. Yes, Chem, Mornar Vohayam. Yes, Kidem Vohayam.
Kasmik Kozanyan for preparing the delicious Mata Harisa. She prepared it with love and respect for our heritage and for our people. Please give her a round of applause. because it will be more about resurrection. I would like to start with uh, 2 Corinthians saying, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Keep this verse in your mind. The Paul said, Paul is saying, those words are very true in our nation. It's very true for any Armenian who went through those difficult times. And I like photos. Always photos put things in my mind. I saw this last year. It was done 1915, 2016. And as you realize, that seven, I changed it. I couldn't find someone doing this photo. But I felt this photo is what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> This, this photo is, I think, can tell us many things by just looking at it. And then I was thinking, okay, there says, what can I say in coming 15, 20 minutes? Hairul Yerbu Dari Harashki. 102 years to, uh, to Kesar and north to Tarsus, that area though, uh, close to the uh, uh, Mediterranean Sea, and not like more Marash, Aintab, or Zeytun inside Anatolia. They are very near the Gomer chain, they are very near the Zerki, Gomer and Garbat chain. Kesam is one of those areas because those are the only Armenians that they went to during the 1915 to uh, Deratiye, which is in Syria, but they came back. Only Armenians that stay in their village after the massacre are the Kesamsis. So my grandfather, Baraman Hoja, always took us to Kesam. For summer, we had a summer home, and so on. And that that church is a very it's the Armenian Evangelical Church. And in 2014, March 21, pro ISIS group came and destroyed the whole village: the Apostolic Church, the Catholic Church, the, the, the Armenian Evangelical And this is inside the church, one of the ISIS. People are, oh, it's so dark there, maybe you're not seeing it. This is Asi Horaningom, and there's a this, but that's, and he's cutting all the crosses. And this is the inside the church, 2014. They stayed 90 days in a miracle, it's a miracle of God. After 90 days, they left to Ketsinyela. And what will Armenians do? Start cleaning. Look inside the church, April 2015. They did the commemoration inside burned church. That church was facing Turkey. That's the closest church which is independent of Turkey, facing Turkey, is in Kesa. Now, two days ago, I called the pastor. His name is Gerabat Veljiroy uh, Ghazarian. He said three rockets came and hit us on Saturday night. So I said, anyone park us with Omega Mahatsa chair, it's all, you know, buildings are destroyed. We are meeting now with the head of the Tashnak Sutyun there, the Hertaba. We're meeting with the, the clergy to decide what to do April 24 on Monday. I said, Jirai, it's very difficult. He said, please pray with me. Shall we take the responsibility and bring the Kesapsis all together? Because we know that there are some spies in our village telling the Turkmen, Turkmen are maybe like 50, 60 kilometers away because they're on the border of Turkey. And they can shoot us quickly. I said, Jirai, this is a difficult decision to take. You, you, you guys need to take this. And behold. 
This came five hours ago to me. This morning in Kesa. Nothing will stop us to worship. Nothing will stop us to come together and praise God together. Look at this photo. Three denominations, the apostolic, the Catholic, and the evangelical came together. They have a choir, joint choir together. This is happening this today. I saw one the garden in Asom. This is the church that I told you was destroyed. Look how they're building it back. The, the, the girls scout and the youth. Look at the youth of the Kesa. I saw one the garden as well. 102 years of miracles of the case. So there was a French boat like this. This is the one. And it was moving around, it moving around. It took 53 days. And September 12, 1915, eventually the French boat arrived and, and rescued uh, the Musadatsis. Where did they go? They went to Porsaid. Because unfortunately, they wanted to go where, you know, the closest place? Cyprus. Cyprus refused. Said, we don't have a place for you. Gibrosa Chantunets. So they went all the way to Borsai to Egypt. It's a long story. Another day I can tell you what happened in Egypt for two years. That have, we have a beautiful stories how the Armenians of Musadakh survived. You see the ladies are making Tsera Kortsner and they were missionaries. They, they, they took those Tsera Kortsners to England, to Europe. They sold it. They, draw, they brought money. They opened ovens in Portside. It's a very, very interesting story what happened in Portside. But after two years in Portside, 1917, um, they went back. Okay, so Kesaptis went back to Kesap, and Musadakh people went back to their villages. Only two years, they were out of their villages. They went back to their villages. And this is monument in Musadakh, remembering the genocide. They lost 18 people on that mountain. Only, only 18 people. And they went back. They went back and they built this uh, monument. Kassandar They were living in happily, 1939 came. Yerani Chikar Hazainar Yeresunina. The whole area was under French colony, Syria, Antioch, and so on. That upper part, as I assume, that is the place which called Antioch, which Musadar is there. It was given to Turkey by French. I mean, sometimes I think about those things. I say, what the heck they're doing? Are they stupid? So they gave that part to Turkey. All the Musadar people said, no way. We are not going to surrender to Turkey, no way. So they asked from the French, do something. You're giving our land to Turkey, you need to do something. And they did. The whole group evacuated the villages, six villages. And they went to Basit, which is a neighboring, close to Kesa. It's a long story how they took the train and they came to Beka, to Rayak and they came to a place called Anjar. That's why when we say Anjar, Anjar is an artificial village. Look at it. It's a desert in Beka Valley. Small homes, five by four meters, and a small toilet. Each home has a small toilet outside. And the French bought the entire land from one man and gave to the Armenians all these homes. And outside the homes, uh, each Armenian had one uh, apple uh, acre land and so on. So this is the story of Anjarsis. Look, this is a real photo from Anjar from early 1939, 41, 42. The priest, the Badveli, and the Catholic priest, they stayed in cemetery because there was malaria, so much death. People were dying every day. So it was a very difficult time. Meanwhile, the Turks, which like to destroy things, remember that monument I told you? This is the monument today in Musada. They destroyed it. But who cares if they destroyed this? We make new ones. We made one in Armenia, close to Hmiazin, and we made one in Anja. 
We don't give up. You destroy, I build. <laughs> so welcome to Anjar. Finally, I brought you to Anjar. So why I'm doing this? Because you all showed the promised movie and I'm continuing from there. What happened to them? What happened if when they were on the boat, they went to Egypt, from Egypt to back to Musaler and from Musaler to Anjar. Welcome to Anjar. Here is a photo from up, from a looking up. I'm sorry that the lighting is very bad. I don't see it very So we will dance. We will not stop. Because we are a nation of resurrection. This is in Kesab, happening this summer, Vacation Bible School. You know, for five, we do it five days there. <laughs> Jesus Christ, guardian hope of the faithful, we ask that you always bless, keep, and protect all of those who are gathered here in commemoration of the Armenian Genocide under the power of your All Holy Cross. Save them from the enemies that are both visible and invisible, and always grant them to be worthy to glorify you, along with your Father in Heaven and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> 